rewind to World War II, and one man thinking outside the box is British engineer Jasper Maskelyne. I'll just take my notes. Jasper Maskelyne was a magician before the war. The skill he had to offer was his knowledge of deception, the skills of a, of a stage magician. And he brought these to bear in North Africa in an enormously imaginative and constructive way. 1942. Field Marshal Erwin Rommel's Africa Corps and Allied troops are in a standoff near the small railway town of El Alamein in northern Egypt. British General Bernard Montgomery wants the Germans to think his attack will be coming from the south. In fact, he'll be coming from the north. To pull this off, the British will need to create a ghost army in the south. Jasper Maskelyne, the former magician, takes the stage. Maskelyne's part in the Battle of Alamein was to create this entirely fictional build-up, giving the German FOTO interpreters the kind of images they would recognize as being a logistic and military build-up to the south. German aerial reconnaissance has to be fooled. The con is on. Act 1. Maskelyne builds dummy tanks and artillery positions out of plywood and painted canvas. He builds fake supply lines and transmits radio communications suggesting entire British battalions are stationed in the south, ready to attack. Act 2 of Maskelyne's Great Illusion requires even greater sleight of hand. He's got to make a thousand British tanks stationed in the north vanish. Turning again to wooden canvas, he disguises them as trucks. The question is, will German observation planes buy this deception? You bet they do. Rommel builds up his army in the southern sector, leaving his northern flank dangerously vulnerable. On October 23, 1942, the British launched their attack. A massive artillery barrage, 800 guns firing 600 shells each. The Germans didn't know what hit them. Jasper Maskelyne has pulled off his greatest trick. The Allies have the advantage, but the battle for El Alamein isn't over yet. To get at the Germans, the Allied forces still need to cross the Devil's Gardens. A 40-mile belt of landmines, three million plus, just waiting to be tripped. Fast forward to World War II, and the metal mine detector is now a crucial bit of kit in every engineer's locker. One of their primary jobs is to detect landmines. No easy task. These devices have become lethally sophisticated. The small German S mine, S for shrapnel, is particularly unpleasant. They were really beastly little things, and they were much more difficult to find. You notice it has these three prongs. So what you did was you buried this in so that only those three prongs stick above the ground. And what usually happened was you kicked one of these prongs by mistake, and that set the mind off. Nicknamed the Bouncing Betty, the S mine would launch into the air at waist height and explode. Designed to maim, not kill, it shredded limbs and genitals. So this bounds up about waist level, and then it explodes. And these ball bearings that are all the way around come flying out. And it's very, very nasty indeed. Crude but hugely effective, landmines were now a crucial weapon. In North Africa, German Field Marshal Erwin Rommel had invested in them wholesale. Three million devices just waiting to go boom. Rommel ordered his pioneers and his Italian engineers to begin laying what he called Devil's Gardens. They were an elaborate network of mines, charges, booby traps, which would slow down the most ruthless enemy. In the final stage of the Allied assault on El Alamein in Egypt, British engineers with metal detectors will be asked to clear a path through the Devil's Gardens. 
the first guys to advance into German lines were the engineers sweeping for the mines. A extremely hazardous and very difficult job. Rommel's artillery starts targeting the exposed engineers. They're hanging in the wind, stood up, no cover, sucking up lead. You have to wave the detect, rather like a scythe, put to and fro in front of you on the ground. But you've got to stand up to do it. And that makes you a very easy target for the enemy. To beat the Devil's Gardens, the British engineers must find other ways of clearing a path. First, they send in specially designed flail tanks that detonate mines without exposing the crew to lethal lead. Second, engineers ditch their metal detectors and turn the clock back to an older, safer method of mine detection. A much better way is to crawl on your stomach on the ground where you're much, much safer and poke about with spikes. Brave engineers eventually cleared a safe path through the gardens. British tanks punched through and defeated the Germans. El Alamein became a crucial Allied victory.